Hello, everybody. My name is Liz Magnanti, and I'm from The Birdhouse in Rochester, New York. And today we're talking about woodpeckers. And woodpeckers can be found mainly in woodlands or in forests. So they are dependent on trees and on uh, old growth, dead and decaying trees. They will forage for insects on these trees and on the branches. And they'll communicate by drumming, which is when they will make a really loud reverber reverberating sound as they drum on a tree when they peck it really, really quickly with their beak. They will make a lot of holes in these trees and they'll use those cavities to nest in and, in, and to roost in. What's neat about woodpeckers is that they do have these specialized feet and they have what are called zygodactylus feet. And that means that two toes are pointing upwards and two toes are pointing downwards or backwards. And that allows them to cling on to surfaces really well. So they can cling onto the side of trees. They can cling <clears throat> sideways and can cling upside down. And it's a special toe functions that allow them to do that. Normally birds have three toes that are pointing upward and one toe pointing downward, but woodpeckers are the exception. And you can see here in this picture, there's a hairy woodpecker that is perched with ease on the side of the tree here with its feet. And you can see those two toes are pointing upward and two toes are pointing downward. And it allows them to cling to different surfaces quite easily. Here's a red-bellied woodpecker clinging onto a feeder and you can see that those two toes are pointing upwards and then the two are in the back. So another neat thing is that woodpeckers have a very specialized skull. They spend a lot of their time pecking at trees, so why don't they get headaches? Well, the reason for that is that they have a specialized bill and tongue. So their bill allows them to chip away at trees like a little chisel so they're, they can easily chip away at trees. And they have a special cavity in their skull for their tongue. So they have very, very long tongues. And when not in use, the tongue is actually wrapped around its head, wrapped around the brain and through the skull. So you can see in the picture here, it shows how the tongue is attached to the, the very top of the bill and when they go out to use it, it extends out. And so that allows them to get insects and sap out of the tree. But that tongue, when not in use, will wrap all the way back around its head and it'll give the, the brain just a little bit more padding. Here's some woodpeckers that you'll find here in the upstate New York area. The first and probably most common is going to be the downy woodpecker. And these are both male downy woodpeckers and you can tell they're male by that red on the back of their head so the females will just be all black and white they're not going to have any red on them at all and downy woodpeckers if you get them visiting your bird feeders are going to be the size of a suet cake so they're quite a small bird and sometimes you'll hear them before you do see them so their call is very common and i'll play you that right here So they'll have a chip type of call and then they also have what's called a descending whinny type of call where uh, the, the call will go down in pitch. So a really common sound that you might hear in the woods or even in your backyard. So this is the downy woodpecker. Take a look at the size of its bill. Its bill is quite small compared to the other woodpeckers we will see like this one. So this is the hairy woodpecker and the hairy woodpecker looks very, very similar to the downy woodpecker, except they're significantly larger. And on the right hand side there, you can see that there is the, the downy woodpecker on the left side of the suet feeder. And then the hairy woodpecker, which is quite a bit larger, is on the right side of the suet feeder. So whereas the downy woodpecker is about the size of a suet cake, the hairy woodpecker will be significantly larger. And just like the downy woodpecker, the males will have red on the back of the head. So right here, we're looking at all female birds. The two hairy woodpeckers and downy here in the picture are all females. And they are very common at feeders, probably not as common as your downy woodpecker, but don't be surprised if you see a bird that looks like a large version of a downy woodpecker, that's gonna be the hairy. They also have much more significantly sized beak than your downy woodpecker does. 
The red-bellied woodpecker is also quite common, especially at feeders. They're becoming even more common and they're increasing their ranges a little bit as well. The red-bellied woodpecker's name is a little deceiving because looking at these pictures here, it doesn't look like they have a red belly at all, but they actually do. They have a little bit of tinge of red on their bellies, which you can see depending on how they perch. Um, it can be tough because usually their bellies are up against the thing they're perching on, but sometimes in flight you can even see that little red patch of red that they have. So a lot of people will consider this a red-headed woodpecker but it's not. It's called a red-bellied woodpecker. We do have a red-headed woodpecker, which you'll see here shortly, that has a fully red head. And just like the downy and hairy woodpeckers, the red-bellied woodpeckers are going to have more red on their head if they're male. So on the left-hand side, there is the male red-bellied woodpecker, and on the right is the female. And the female almost has a bald patch on the top of her head. She doesn't have red that extends all the way to her bill, but the male does. And their call is another pretty distinctive call that you can hear in the woodwinds. And this is what it sounds like. So really, really common bird. You probably get them at your feeders if you do put up a suet feeder. So that's the red-bellied woodpecker. And here is your red-headed woodpecker. So you can see the difference now with comparing the two. The red-headed woodpecker has a really, really striking red head. These birds used to be very, very common, but actually they're, they are experiencing significant declines in their population. And no one's exactly sure 100% why, but their territories are shrinking quite a bit, whereas the red-bellied woodpeckers are growing. And they both will stay in the same kind of habitat. They're dependent on dead stands of trees, but nobody's quite sure why their populations are doing so poorly. So these are the red-headed woodpeckers. And unlike the other woodpeckers we've seen, the male and female do look alike. So you can't really tell the difference between the two. But they are found around, if you're in the upstate New York area, or in the Rochester area, um, they can be found around the, the lake shore is a great place to look, Durand Eastman Park. Um, and also in Webster, people get them coming to their yards and coming to their feeders every once in a while. So if you are lucky enough to see a red-headed woodpecker, they are quite the treat. They're really, really striking. Another woodpecker we have in the area is called the Northern Flicker. And the Northern Flicker is going to be about the same size as your red-bellied woodpecker but they have more polka dots on them. So whereas the red-bellied woodpecker has a lot of striping across it, its back, um, the flicker has more polka dots. So that's one way you can tell the difference between the two. Also the northern flicker male, which you can see there on the left, has a black mustache almost that is right on its face there. But they also have that black, almost a bib, that covers the top of their breast as well. So that's one way you can identify them these are found all over the U.S., but on the East Coast, they have a version called what's, what's called a yellow shafted flicker. So in both of these pictures, if you look at their tail feathers, you can see the underside is yellow. And that is our eastern version of the northern flicker called the yellow shafted flicker. If you were to go out west, you would see this version. This is called the red shafted flicker. And the underside of their wings are red. This is the largest woodpecker that we have in the area. This is called the pileated woodpecker. And since the probable uh, extinction of the ivory-billed woodpecker, this is going to be the largest woodpecker in the U.S. So the pileated woodpecker can be 16 inches or so long, so it's quite a big woodpecker. And this is what Woody Woodpecker was modeled after the pileated here. And you can tell the difference again between male and female. The male will have more red on its face. So with these woodpeckers, the males will have more red on them than the females do. On the left is your female. She doesn't have any red on her face besides her crest. And the male on the right hand side there does have the red that's going across its face by its beak. And these woodpeckers create large, large holes in trees, and they're often rectangular holes, especially if they've been working on them quite long. So whereas most woodpeckers will create a circular hole, the pileated woodpecker will make long rectangular 
poles. And it doesn't take them long to do quite a bit of damage to a tree. They can really um, do quite a bit of damage. Here's a pileated woodpecker that's been working on a tree for, for, for some time. It's hard to say just how long, but if you ever get to watch them pecking at a tree, the wood chips just go flying. And when there's a pileated woodpecker around, their call is quite loud, so you'll probably know it. And this is what they sound like. And that sound can really echo through a forest. And here's what a pileated woodpecker typical holes will look like. They'll be long and rectangular in shape. And then there's some young that are sticking their heads out of one of the nesting cavities there. And finally, another type of woodpecker that you'll find here in the upstate New York area is going to be called the yellow-bellied sapsucker. And this is our only migratory woodpecker. So they are here, they come in in the early spring and then they'll leave again in the fall. So they'll go down south for the winter. And the yellow-bellied sapsucker eats not only insects like a lot of woodpeckers do, but they are dependent on a lot of sap from trees like their name would suggest. So they're often found on trees like basswood that have really sweet, sweet sap. And you can tell if a yellow-bellied sapsucker has been around because they make a different type of hole also, whereas most woodpeckers are going to make larger round holes. These guys will do little rows of small holes. And this allows for the sap to still flow through the tree so they can make these little tiny holes. They'll come back and they'll drink the sap out of them. Plus that sap that's flowing will attract insects as well, which they'll feed on uh, from the tree. So this is called the yellow bellied sap sucker. And every once in a while we hear that somebody gets them at their feeder, which is always a treat. So some easy ways to attract woodpeckers to your yard. The best thing you can do is put out suet and suet will attract woodpeckers. It'll also attract nuthatches and there's other birds that'll eat it as well, but woodpeckers really, really love suet. And we recommend what are called paddle tail suet feeders. And that's what you see on the left here. This pileated woodpecker is quite large. If you've ever had a suet feeder before, it might've just been a little square cage, which will fit a suet cake. That's great for the smaller woodpeckers, but the pileated, because it's so large, needs more, more room to land. And these woodpeckers will use their tail to give them stability. So you can see that here, the, the pileated woodpecker is using that tail the, on the suet feeder to prop himself up. So these paddle tail woodpecker feeders just give them more stability when they're feeding. So that'll help give you not only the small woodpeckers, but you can get the larger ones and they can feed quite easily like this pileated woodpecker here. There's also what are called upside down suet feeders. And here there, there's the downy woodpecker feeding from it. Upside down suet feeders will help keep out starlings and grackles. The idea behind them is that the birds have to feed underneath the feeder. So they have those specialized feet that allow them to do that, but it can be hard for some of the other birds like the grackles, like sparrows, like starlings to do that. Another bird that you can get at the upside down suet feeders is going to be a nuthatch, like this white breasted nuthatch that's on the right hand side. So they can also feed from those as well. So if you have birds that are raiding your suet feeders and you really just want to get the woodpeckers, try an upside down suet feeder. Peanuts, of course, are another great way to attract birds. You can do both peanuts in the shell or the peanut pickouts, the insides of the peanut. The feeders for peanuts don't necessarily need perches on them if you're going to attract woodpeckers because the woodpeckers can cling so easily. So here on the left-hand side is the peanut, uh, the peanut silo feeder from Aspex, and there are no perches on it because the woodpeckers can easily cling to it and feed. If you want to get birds though, like a blue jay, for example, to feed, you would want something with a larger perch on it that would give them some more room. So um, the right there is a downy woodpecker eating a peanut from a peanut in the shell feeder, and that does have a tray on it. So that will give you some perching room for the larger birds as well. And here's a downy woodpecker eating a peanut from somebody's hand at Mendon Ponds Park if you're from the Rochester area and you're familiar with Birdsong Trail. It's a great place to go. 
bring some bird seed and the birds will eat right out of your hand, including recently the downy woodpeckers. And you'll find that the seed does make a difference when you're going out there. If you bring something that has peanuts in it, you're more likely to not only get the chickadees feeding more often, but you'll get the woodpeckers more often as well. You can also feed them mealworms. The, they are insect eaters, woodpeckers love insects, and live or freeze-dried mealworms will also bring them into your yard. And then here's some woodpeckers drinking nectar and eating some fruit. So it might not be their number one go-to thing, but especially in the early spring when they're really hungry, uh, woodpeckers are known to go to nectar feeders, including that yellow-bellied sapsucker when they're migrating through. You might see them visiting your hummingbird feeder. And then they're, uh, they're also known to eat oranges too. If you put out a, an oriole feeder, you might get a red-bellied woodpecker like this one here eating an orange or even flickers, we hear that a lot. Woodpeckers are cavity nesters. And that means that they will nest in trees, but they'll also nest in birdhouses. So you can get woodpecker houses. There are such things. And the hole size makes a difference. Usually woodpecker houses have larger holes in them and they're a larger nesting cavity. So the house is going to be taller. They usually come with wood chips because woodpeckers don't build their own nests. So you put the wood chips inside the house as a little uh, almost like a little pillow for the eggs that they'll lay and you hang it up someplace stationary so it doesn't move around a lot and you just might get a woodpecker coming in. Also to attract woodpeckers to your yard you want to leave pieces of dead trees out if you've got a dead tree in your yard you don't want to necessarily leave it up but if you are getting it taken down you can always leave parts of it in your yard and that will give the bugs a place to lay their eggs and then come the woodpeckers to feed on them. So at the birdhouse we recommend in order to attract woodpeckers, suet feeders are key especially those that have a paddle tail. Any kind of cavities will entice them to nest in your yard and leave some pieces of dead trees if possible because the more you can attract insects to your yard the more you'll be able to attract woodpeckers. So uh, that means also you want to stay away from any kind of sprays that could kill insects uh, because that will diminish your odds of getting woodpeckers and if the birds ingest a bug that has died of taking in some kind of chemical, that chemical will in turn go right into the bird. So here are some tips on attracting woodpeckers and hopefully you can have some luck with getting them into your yard. Visit the, our website at thebirdhouseny.com for, for more information and for more videos. And until next time, enjoy your birds.